Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is January 20th and this is our presidential inauguration day. But I am down here in my basement to try to sneak in one video before I have to leave because we were just notified by the parents of Nathan that he has a half day and we have to pick him up and spend the rest of the afternoon with him. And so that puts a damper on a uh, afternoon that I had planned. A friend of mine is down here from Pennsylvania for the inaugural and he was going to come by and drop by and take a look at my printer dungeon but that's not going to be the case unfortunately and I'm kind of saddened about that because I really did want to have him come over if possible and take a look at what I have here as he is the proud owner of a Canon Pro 10 but if you got to see the video that I just posted I believe I did that last night about not being able to reproduce certain colors. I'm going to go ahead and touch on that a little bit further and kind of uh, give you a bunch of hints and possibilities to try to improve on that uh, inability that many printers seem to have. Now, I did show you this image printed onto paper using two rendering intents, the ones that are normally used by most folks. And you get to see that this is all OEM on the Pro 1 OEM inks, OEM paper, OEM profile, and using perceptual and relative colorimetric. And you saw how badly perceptual performs in these areas here, whereas using relative, it is very smooth and beautiful. So that may be a reason why this particular shade always seems to print dark for people. And this particular shade here of that deep purple almost prints as a black and this is mainly what people have been complaining about and i was almost able to solve that by just really just changing my uh, rendering intent now we talked about profiling a profile is important a profile will kind of uh, improve the ability of the printer to reproduce your colors that are being sent to it from the monitor correctly and it helps. I want to show you very quickly again this is something I've already discussed in previous videos. This is a painterly rendition of an image. This is Gettysburg and I want you to keep an eye on this area here. This area here. The bushes kind of go dark. Here they are brought out detail that's kind of lost here is brought out here very clearly by simply using a custom profile. Now this was used with Ink Owl inks and I was experimenting with that particular new batch of inks on one of my printers and I decided that what the heck let me go ahead and create a profile. I should be able to improve my color rendition or reproduction simply by doing that. So that's another reason to possibly invest on something as low end as a color monkey photo from x ray of course you can go higher than that if you have the money to spend and produce even slightly better profiles the color monkey produces wonderful profiles all right so another inability of printers is to reproduce these bright bright red oranges greens lavenders, purples, blues, and printers have different ink sets and as they evolve their manufacturers try to increase or improve on the gamut or the color reproduction of the printer, how many colors it can actually reproduce, how many colors that is, are being sent from the computer are actually being able to be reproduced by that particular printer using that ink set and they're always trying to improve upon that and so a printer such as the older Stylus Photo 1800 utilized blue ink, blue and red ink, and then cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Later on, the 1900 from Epson, the R2000, the P400 utilizes red and orange. Again, K3 printers, MCYK, light magenta, light cyan, and then series of grays or light versions of black. But they also have the newer generation K3 printers with the so-called vivid magenta. 
which again was supposed to improve the ability of your printer to be able to reproduce these deep crazy purples and blues all right so again things change pro 100 utilizes red pro 9000 mark ii from canon utilize green and red ink the pro 10 pro 1 pro 1000 they utilize red as well but the pro 1000 utilizes blue wow so there you go every printer tries to improve on the ability to reproduce as many many colors as it can and usually what happens is that the computer sends colors that are way beyond the printer's ability in other words it it kind of overdoes the color gamut of that image the printer can only reproduce as much as it can and often it tends to fail at trying to reproduce the complete series of colors or values that are being sent from the computer but it does the best it can now another question was well i took a picture of a bunch of girls wearing lavender dresses and their dresses don't match when i put it on print or when i view it on the computer the dresses don't match what i remember they are being rendered in the uh, display differently even though the skin tones look normal everything else looks normal this particular colors are not being rendered correctly well that has to do with camera calibration and there's a way x rite has the color uh, i believe it's called color check or something like that it's a little card that they give you when you buy a color monkey and it has a bunch of different colors in some black white and gray patches different um uh neutralities i guess warm and cool and you photograph this at the scene okay using the same lighting conditions and then you use that image to process through software and create a profile for the camera which is then applied to any images that the camera produces within lightroom or photoshop and that tends to correct for these inaccuracies of your sensor to be able to capture or reproduce colors that the lens itself is focusing onto that sensor and the sensor cannot reproduce that particular magenta or that particular lavender purple blue green and so this profile will compensate for those errors and will then apply the corrections while you view it literally under your photoshop uh, editing module and so that is one way to start and if you already own a color monkey photo you will have the color checker card available to you for free and then all you have to do is download that uh, software and every time you shoot anything under different light conditions you will have to shoot another color checker sample okay you will have to have your model or if you're doing a landscape just lay it against a rock make sure that the same lighting is uh, being illuminated onto the card take a photograph of it approximate angle where you're going to actually shoot that landscape and that will allow you to then for that particular lighting condition and time of day sunlight whatever you will be able to create a profile that's specific to that situation and it helps a lot it is the first step to make sure that the image you're looking at actually represents the colors that your lens actually saw and that's the first step. A lot of people don't even know about that. And I recently learned about that only when I bought my color monkey. So how about the ability to be able to produce a neutral print? And that's about as neutral as it gets, folks. So again, oh, my prints, my neutral prints are a little bit green. My neutral prints are a little bit blue. My neutral prints are a little bit, or my black and whites, let's say, are a little bit warm or cool. Well, profiling custom profile will solve that believe me the pro 100 with the oem inks did not produce a perfectly neutral print using the oem profile a lot of people complained about that all you had to do was make a custom profile and bingo there it is neutral now if you can produce a neutral print from an rgb file that has been converted to black and white but it still contains rgb uh, information in it that means i could put another rgb color file and print it neutrally okay without any color cast using the same settings using the same profile i use for this if i then take a a uh, unconverted file 
it should come out neutral as well. It should not have a color cast. If it does, something is wrong with your workflow. Really, really that's it, it amounts to that. Here's my little collage. And purposely, these ridiculous blues, ridiculous oranges, these lavenders and purples, this is a shot of a pitcher of lemonade and there was some blue uh, material behind it on the table and I was able to pick that up and you can see the crazy yellows, oranges from the strawberries floating in the lemonade. These are slices, lemon slices. All of that normally is not reproducible accurately. And when you look at your image in Photoshop and you click on the show, the gamut warning, a lot of these colors are then grayed out because they cannot be reproduced. If you are working in the sRGB color space, even more colors will be grayed out because that color space is so much smaller than the information that is composed in that raw image that is included in that raw image, I should, I should say. So I normally set my Photoshop working space as Adobe RGB 1998, I believe it is. And yeah, that might be more than my printers can actually reproduce, but I'd rather work on a larger color space and then send that to the printer as a 16-bit file. And hopefully uh, the printer will then receive as much information as it can instead of having received a crippled image that has lost a lot of the information because you were working in a much smaller color space to begin with. So that is my approach. This image here, easy. It has very subtle colors. Nothing is out of gamut. I've already checked that. And this one, of course, all of this blue is out of gamut, period. And so what you do is you try to maximize the printer's ability, okay? That's all I can say. Depending on your printer, each printer due to its ink set and its print engine has a certain ability to reproduce colors. And you have to then take that to the advantage toward you so that you can actually maximize what that printer can produce. Don't minimize it, maximize it. So send an image that has the most probability for that printer to be able to use every ounce, every nuance that it can produce, okay? of that, that particular set of colors that are you being that you're sending to it. Now, here's one that is really crazy. These colors are ridiculous. This is very difficult to reproduce. So is this aqua or cyan color of the truck, this yellow here. So if you look at this under gamut warning, you might see some of those colors grayed out. And that just indicates that that exceeds the ability of that printer under that particular ICC profile. You have to do this under soft proofing to be able to see that. And so if I take this back to my editing area and I illuminate this and I look at my monitor, most 98 point something percent of all my colors are reproduced faithfully, okay? The print is not too dark. That's another thing. My prints are too dark. Well, this print is definitely not too dark. Yeah, you, you guys can uh, be a judge of that. It is taken under a very overcast day, and yet it is not too dark. The reflections on the what's left of the chrome on the uh, front grill, pure white in some of these little areas of specular lighting or specular highlights. Black, 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 and every tone in between. And so, yeah, you are able to do this. You are able to do this. You just need to nail down your workflow and make sure that it's fully color managed. And that involves calibration of the monitor, okay? That's the most important thing. Calibration of the camera as well. If you are able to do that, go ahead and calibrate your camera sensor so that when you are shooting, say, in this kind of lighting situation, the first thing you would do is put the color card in front of the truck, take a picture of it, then use that as your standard to create a profile for this day, that time of the afternoon or morning. And that way, every color that was here and some of the colors that your sensor has trouble reproducing will be adjusted for by the color checker. What it's doing is going to go ahead and look at the colors on the uh, color checker card and it's going to decide by scanning them, it's going to actually isolate each little square. 
the software that is, is going to then decide, uh oh, that square is supposed to be this value. Why? Because the software was created to work with that particular color checker card. So it knows what to expect. Now, if the color being rendered by your monitor differs from that, then it will make an adjustment. It will make a, not a global adjustment, it will make a specific adjustment for that specific value and will correct for it. And so it's a wonderful thing to see when you apply that profile and all of a sudden your image changes and the colors are correct. It will blow your mind, I'm telling you. So for those of you who own a Color Monkey Photo and you have that free version of the color checker card, go ahead and do that. Look at the videos that are offered on the xstrike.com site and learn how to do that process. It's able to be done on Photoshop as well as Lightroom. So in fact, it's easier in Lightroom than in Photoshop. So go ahead and do that. If you do not have a Color Monkey and you're thinking about buying one in the future or you have another uh, calibrator from x right then you can buy the full-blown color checker two-part card. I think it's like $99. It is something that you will not regret buying, I'm, I guarantee you. All right, that is it. I'm going to head on up, get ready to uh, go get the boy. He gets out at 12.30 today. He has a half day. And I'm not sure whether that was for the inauguration or whatever. Uh, usually schools here in this area stay open all day uh, regardless. So, But he goes to a Catholic school, so maybe that's different. So, Okay, please subscribe, share, and like. We are uh, under 20 subscribers from hitting 5,000. Maybe the next video will be the one that we will be popping off some Pepsi or something to drink and celebrate. So thank you once again for all your support. Don't forget to share, like, and when you subscribe, click that little bell so that you know when I upload something new. I keep saying that all the time, but it's something that escapes a lot of us. I do the same things when I um, subscribe to somebody else's channel. I make sure that I click that, that little bell. All right, so thank you once again. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.